Hi guys, welcome back to Danielle Klee SLP. My name's Danielle and today we'll be talking about nutritious orofacial movement. So I talk about movement in the sense of what is nutritious and good for our bodies. Um, to give a bit of background on this term, it was coined by Katie Bowman. She's the author of Move Your DNA and this book had a profound impact on my life um, after sustaining a foot injury. And the long story short is that she explains that there are certain types of movements that are essential for our body's nutrition. Like you could equate a movement to something as nutrient dense as vitamin D or B12 or A or K. It's something that the body needs to live and to survive and to function appropriately. And um, in my personal case, I sustained a really interesting soft tissue foot injury that was not healing and was not resolving despite a bunch of physical therapy and numerous orthopedist appointments. And her book basically argued, reevaluate your hips, your pelvis, and see if you're using your muscles accordingly because oftentimes pain patterns are the result um, of incorrect movement patterns. I ended up finding out that I wasn't using half of my glutes to walk, to, to run, to take steps, to do any of the intensive outdoor athletic activities that I was doing and changing my movement patterns at a core fundamental level to the way that I bent down to pick something up off the ground to the way that I got up out of my bed in this morning significantly reduced my pain. Um, and I really liked this metaphor because I think that it can be used when we're talking about orofacial movement and development. So there are certain movement patterns of the mouth and the face that are nutritious and that are vital to this mechanism really functioning properly. Now, if you wanna learn more about swallowing, you can check out my book, or not my book, my video on myofunctional disorders, um, which I'll post a link to, but we talk about how correct oral tongue posture is the tongue at the roof of the mouth, or the tip of the tongue on the alveolar ridge, the rest of the tongue at the roof of the mouth, the teeth touching or slightly apart, and the lips sealed. Again, this is the posture that we need in order to enter a typical swallow. Now what's really interesting is that if the body isn't engaging in this type of movement pattern, we're going to see anomalies in structures. And there's a term that I really like, which is mechanotransduction, and I, just wanna get the whole term in here. And it's the process by which cells sense and then translate mechanical signals. So this can include compression, tension, fluid shear, created by their physical environment into biomechanical signals, allowing cells to adjust their structure and function accordingly. So ultimately, what mechanotransduction teaches us is that our body's movement environment has a major impact on our physical structures and functions. And a lot of times this is despite the genes that we have. So I think that this topic is really important to bring into the conversation about myofunctional disorders and the ways in which we feed and swallow and use our mouths every day. Because as I talk about, you swallow 500 to 1,000 times a day. That's a lot of mechanical input that you're giving to your mouth. And, you know, I'll have patients come in and say, I don't understand, you know, dad had perfect teeth, I had perfect teeth. Why doesn't, you know, our child have perfect teeth? And the answer, whoops, is that cells respond to forces placed on them. And when we're talking about the mouth, this can be something like an oral habit. So with thumb sucking, for example, if you have a kiddo who sucks their thumb nine hours every single day, you will see changes to their structures that are not rooted in their genes, but they're actually environmental factors. And so this is what we call epigenics. And despite the fact that this child's mom and dad both had perfect teeth, which actually is my story, neither of my parents had braces, both have beautiful jaws and faces, um, this kiddo that thumb sucked though is gonna have a much more high narrow palate and is going to have a severe overbite because of environmental factors, movement patterns that have shaped the development of their dentition. Similarly, when we talk about myofunctional disorder or a tongue thrust, we'll also see structural anomalies. So despite the fact that mom and dad both have perfect occlusion or perfect bites, if their child is thrusting their tongue forward 500 to 1,000 times a day, we will see 
anomalies to their physical development that are the result of environmental factors. So this is why I do the work that I do. I am so passionate about teaching families strategies and tools early on to support good oral facial development in their children. And then I also work with kiddos that have developmental disabilities, um, you know, rare syndromes and, and delays where I love supporting those families and saying, okay, well, we need extra support in these areas, but how can we still help your kiddo meet their milestones and help their face and their mouth um, and the structures associated develop, you know, to, the, to their child's fullest. So please feel free to leave your comments below. You can always visit my website, daniellecleeslp.com for more information and a more thorough overview of this topic. You can find it in the clinical um, topics tab. And then I also have an Instagram account, daniellecleeslp which you can find out there on Instagram. Um, but yeah, excited that you guys could visit. Think about the ways that you're moving your mouth and your tongue because it has an impact on your teeth and the development of your face. So have a great day and talk to you guys soon.